By the way, if you are one of those people who have never received the miracle, today is your day. Mm. I expect miracle today. Nothing is impossible. Those who believe and see. Yeah, yeah. And I, I expect, expect a miracle today. Sing it again. I expect. I expect a miracle. miracle today. Nothing is impossible to those who believe and see. Confess it with your mouth. And for that reason, I expect a miracle. I expect a miracle today. I expect a miracle today. Yeah, nothing, nothing is, is impossible. myself. Hmm. Tell the neighbor, neighbor, I'm expecting a miracle. Tell them, I don't know what you want, but I'm taking everything for myself. Tell them, neighbor, allow me to be selfish tonight. I'm taking my favor. I'm taking my healing. I'm taking my prosperity. I'm taking anointing. Air. Eh, I'm taking power. I'm taking ability to shift economies. Can I tell you something else you should tell them you're taking with you? Tell them, neighbor, I'm taking long life. Hey. Tell them I'm taking mended bones, healed skin. Mm. Sit down. Ah. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report and to whom has the arm? Um, of the Lord being revealed. Oh, I didn't completely welcome all the pastors. I only welcome the pastors from outside. All the pastors from inside. I want to welcome you in a very special way. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking care of God's flock. I don't know about you, but I tend to think that pastors must be some of God's favorite people. Yeah. I think so. Because, you know, don't we all like people who help us with our work? Yeah. What a blessing. Hello, there was something I was going to tell you, but... No, I need to first remember it, then I'll tell it to you. I'll remember it in the course of time. Yeah. Now, it happened on a certain day as I was teaching that there were what? Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of God was present to heal them. As I'm teaching, the power of God it's not my words. It's the word of God. 
Because one of these days you realize that even though God loves me the most, he actually has no favorites at a technical level. But in reality, <clears throat> and then you'll find that if you take the same scriptures and apply them, they work for you. Oh, I've remembered what I wanted to tell you. What was I telling you before I wanted to tell you this one? Pastors. Pastor Ari is in, is in charge of my wallet. By the way, here we enjoy the word. So when we start the word, we are not in a hurry. We don't keep check checking our clock. Where are you going on Friday night? You'll even find traffic jam right here when you're trying to get out. So relax. Yeah, I know someone here, you're just thinking, when is it? Why isn't it starting? We want to go. Who? Huh? Is it their birthday? Wow. Some people. Anyway. So, the, uh, I'm reading a certain book called Divine Faith and Miracles. And this guy, this is something that I want you to be interested in. That's why I'm teaching Isaiah 53 today. You know, there are different ways to receive miracles and breakthrough. One of the ways, by the way, it's just outweighing the devil. You know that thing of you open your eyes and we see who will blink first. You know, Satan, you know, patience is a gift of the Spirit. And Satan does not have the Holy Spirit. So he's not patient. And many of you, many miracles that you would have received, you, you didn't receive because you quit. You stopped waiting. Yeah. Let me tell you, you can frustrate the devil to no end by just being patient and rejoicing. Oh, yes. I'm telling you. Yeah. The Mgenyes look good together. <laughs> I'll be there. Eh? You are there. I am there. I know. Yeah, they got it from somewhere. Hey! Even Nana Chewingers. Hey! Yeah. In this church, we love love. Hey! When people are in love, eh, hey! we love it. Hey! What a blessing. Hey! Who is that one who is trying to keep me quiet? I'm on top going to work. I tell you, you don't know that the people who are here are the ones who need to go to the village. So those of you who are watching us online on top of an anthill, an anthill, because you're looking for YouTube to take water, YouTube to take water. You're, you're like this. In whatever village. We also send you greetings. Pastor Julius, don't provoke me. Oh, yeah, that's not my village. Let me mind my business. Yes. My mind is on my business. No, I was telling you, this guy, so, he was, sit down and I finish the story. He was in Rema Bible College. Rema Bible College is a Bible college that was started by Brother Kenneth Hagen. And as you can imagine, word of faith. So he used to conduct school of healing school where he would take the same things he has been teaching in class but now he's flowing. You see like the way I'm preaching now without point A, point B. No, just, just and people would get so many miracles. And then he started teaching them how to believe for yourself. So one time, all these are guys of 
miracles, healing, word of faith. So one time, flu invaded the whole college. So everyone was confessing, but yeah, sneezing. Was it flu? Yeah, that one. What? That, yeah. And it was so bad, not so like our flu. Yeah. They are terrible, you know, like COVID type thing. And so one day, he, so he thinks, he's like, ah, ah, ah. I'm not, that's not my person, what? So one day he sits somewhere where there was a, near the door and a lot of cold air was coming. It was winter. And then it, it grabbed him. And he went to his room, he went home and said, this is not my portion. He believed, he believed. He believed, he believed. Praying the whole night to make sure he doesn't what? Catch the cold, but catch the flu, but the symptoms are there. So he was so desperate. Okay. One of these days, we are going to have soundproofing yeah. and air conditioning. Yeah. So that the neighbors do what they want and we also do what we want. Yeah. Yes. So, so, in that book, he writes about the five teacher, what are they called? What did he call it? Five it's not undisputable. It's five like foolproof ways of making your faith work. Yeah? So the first is the word. Hmm? Five infallible steps of faith. And the first is meditation. Meditation on the word. You know, don't just on the surface. You meditate in it, you repeat it, you speak it, you think deeply on it. So meditation is step one. The second is illumination. <laughs> so when you meditate until there is light. And the third one is prayer of faith. So your meditation, illumination, and then you start praying. The prayer of faith. Now you pray with boldness that what God has promised, he's able to do it. And then the fourth one is confession. And then the fifth is possession. So confession, many, many times the reason you are not walking in as much victory, you're confessing things you have not meditated on and for which you don't have illumination or what you would call revelation or knowledge. I'm not here to destroy, don't say this man is destroying our faith because on Wednesday when I was saying you may need about 10 years for the word to compound, some people started leaving the group. <laughs> I'm not saying it doesn't work in the next week. It works, but the way it will work in 10 years is so different from the way it will work in a month's time. The same way when you plant a seed, the way that little, when we moved to Chitukutwe, we started planting little seedlings around the compound. Now the things are told we have had to bring in people to cut off branches so as not to harm the neighbor's houses. So what the thing looks like in a year's time and what it looks like in seven years time is not the same. The sower sows the word. The words you are planting in your, in your system right now, the word of God, it, I'm not saying it will not bear fruit in the last time. It will bear fruit. But the kind of fruit it will bear in five years is unbelievably, amazingly, shockingly, awesomely different. Am I making sense? Like when I look at my life now, the things I used to believe God for five years ago, ten years ago, and what I believe now, they are very different. But that's as a result of compounding. Now, back to meditation and all of that. So it is meditation, illumination, or you could call it revelation or knowledge. Meditation, illumination, prayer of faith. You now pray, you start praying the thing. 
confession. Why are you confessing? Because you've prayed the prayer of faith, but the symptoms are opposing your faith, what you. So you have to keep agreeing with God and what He says, and then possession, walking in. Anyway, this guy, he's fighting the flu until 3 a.m. So at 3 a.m., it suddenly occurred to him that he was handling the devil with kid gloves. So he jumped up and stood in his bed and shouted, Satan, get off my body! And he says, instantly, he felt better. And he, he, he had been unable to sleep. You, you know some of that sickness that makes you unable to sleep. So he just fell asleep. And he woke up at seven perfectly well. So when he went to class the next day, when everyone is sneezing, he was everyone's annoyance. I got it. I've learned it. I know how the word works. Now he had an experience. You see, it's one thing for someone to lay hands on you and you get healed. It's another thing when you apply the word to yourself and it works. And you know from this day forward, I will never need what, what. Uh, uh, no, you just stand on it and it works. Am I making sense? So that's where you're going. You have to learn to stand on the word until it works. In everything. Amen. Whether healing, money, purity. Do you know that the mistake many people make about purity is they think when it comes to healing, I need God. When it comes to purity, it is me. Then before you know it, they are taking you like this. Even you are like, where am I going? You're trusting God. You have to trust God in every area of your life, including living a pure life. Don't make the mistake of thinking you keep yourself pure by yourself, but you believe God for money. Yeah, I'm, I'm just here to say a few words and I go home. I, 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 some of the way you're looking at me, it's as if you, 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 you. don't complicate life in Christ. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. You're free from the law of sin and death. Sin and death don't belong to you. Neither do you belong to them. Rather, you are operating in the law of the spirit, which is the law of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Ah, you guys. I can tell that you're already having a happy Easter. Oh, yes. Oh, Queen Kaya is back to the village. All the way from Newcastle. Wow. Anyway, when you are from Chariwajala and it's someone's village, it becomes quite uh, difficult. <coughs> Who has believed our report? <laughs> and to whom has <laughs> the arm of the Lord been revealed? Verse 2. Now he starts talking about Jesus. This is like messianic. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness that, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Give me NLT. Some people, comeliness is disturbing them. But comeliness, see? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful 
or majestic about his appearance. Nothing to attract us to him. That's Jesus. He wasn't a head turner. If he entered the room, you wouldn't notice him. He was very ordinary. Everything about him that worked was the anointing. I was actually thinking about that this morning. As I was trying to think about my life. Because sometimes you think that when you do all these other things, they will work. When you talk a certain way, walk a certain way, dress a certain way. I beg your pardon? Speak a certain way. <laughs> so all those things are good because man looks on the outside. But God looks at that. So if you're going to minister to man, don't show up in shorts. Because man looks on there, you'll be very distracting with your shorts. People will not be able to. Yeah, to get illumination. But at, at the end of the day, when it comes to impact, having impact and results, that they you get it. <laughs> when you come near Busega people, sometimes you have to. <laughs> what you need is the anointing. Huh, Phoebe? Because as for Jesus, hey, I'm going out. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance. So, if Jesus was like some of you, he would have had self-esteem issues. Because there was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance. Nothing to attract us to him. Yeah. You've been thinking that the way you're going to grow your MC or your zone or your whatever is to be attractive in a certain way. Now, I'm not saying wear sackcloth and ashes. What I'm saying, it's not the thing. There was nothing to attract us to Jesus. He was plain. All these current nice pictures of Jesus with curly long hair, perfect face, long nose, blue eyes, Balimba. Oh, by the way, I think Worship Harvest UK, they are having a gathering, a camp this today. So UK team, Pastor Evange and everyone else, we send you greetings. Have a fun Easter weekend. We love you. You're amazing. You're taking the world by storm. There was nothing beautiful. Look, I didn't intend to stay on this verse a long time, but there's someone here. God is telling you, stop focusing too much on your physical appearance. Don't look, use Dio and perfume. And, don't, don't look terrible, but... Ministry is not built on appearances. Ah. You see, even if you went and bought a new shirt and say, okay, I'm going to have a healing service in my location. Let me buy a new shirt. You'll find that the new shirt will not improve 
the results. Now, if you come in a torn t-shirt, you'll make the results worse than they could have been. Adidas. Wow, Dalon. Now, there was nothing beautiful, comely, attractive about him, but the anointing made Jesus very attractive. Very attractive. The anointing will make you very attractive. Everyone will think you are amazing when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Verse 3. Verse 3, let's continue. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Now, he's talking about when in in that moment when he was what? <clears throat> Going to the cross for us. He says he was, he was despised. Can you imagine our Savior was despised and rejected and his closest friends ran away from him? They all forsook him and fled, <laughs> fled, He was a man of sorrows. Wow. There are people here. You've been grieving. You've been sorrowful. You will not describe your life as exciting. But I want you to know, Jesus walked that for you. For you. A man of what? Acquainted with grief. Can you imagine? This is the son of God. He created the sun, the moon, the stars, all the planets, and is here being acquainted with grief. Acquainted means it is your friend. Yeah, grief knows you well. Grief and you, you've known each other. And I'm telling you, he was acquainted with grief so that you don't have to be acquainted with grief. I'm telling you, God is restoring your joy. I can almost see like, like, what, like streams, you know, like gushing out of joy. This is a, this is a pivotal weekend for someone in this regard. Yeah, something has happened and you've somehow failed to go past a certain, it's like, you're held back by elastic bands as you're trying to move forward. But he was acquainted with grief. So you do not have to be a friend of grief. You don't have to be. Yeah. You don't have. He took care of it. Trust him. He will take care of it. Amen. You know, when Jesus was on that cross, people couldn't look. It was so bad. That's why it says we hid our faces from him. In the artwork that they've produced nowadays that has a night a night, nice neat crown of thorns and some cup blood. <laughs> if you've watched The Passion, The Passion movie, that's closer to reality. It was a piece of meat. 
Yeah. Just naked on the cross. Embarrassed. He took all the embarrassment. He was anticipating that you would go through embarrassing situations. When you go to the clinic and they start pro prodding different parts of you and you're like, oh gosh. I can't. Jesus knew. Amen. So he was there like despised, not esteemed. Maybe you've been despised all your life. Maybe you're the one in your family that people don't think you are a big deal. And sometimes these things, they are not a reality, but we perceive them like that. You can be and you're, whoever is raising you is trying to balance the love, but for you, you think that the other person is more loved than you or the other people. So you start developing a complex yeah, of disfavor. You carry around disfavor complex. You just think things work better for other people than you. But tonight, tonight. is your night. Yes. I want you to know that God does not need many months to turn that around. Be flat. With just one touch, every burden fell off my shoulders. With just one touch, every mountain swept away. Now, goodbye, given and shame. He's overcome the grave. We lift the name of Jesus higher. With just one touch, with just one touch, falls off your shoulders right now. Every mountain swept away. Now goodbye, guilt and shame. We lift, the name. we lift the name. Let's go at it one more time. Let's go, let's go. We just want to touch. Everybody. Oh, oh. Every swept away. Bye, 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 bye. I lift the name of Jesus. Sit again with us one. Everybody, my soul. Now, good back into the Oh, yes. We are prophesying through Isaiah 53. If you want to write notes, this is not a good someone. This is prophecy. We are prophets. I came to tell somebody. Shame is over. Shame is over. Shame is over. Shame is over. Catch your wings and fly. Yeah. Catch your wings and fly. You don't have to be stuck. Self-image issues, this, that. 
doctor's reports, accountant's reports, taxation reports, legal reports. No. As long as you have breath, it's time to take your wings and fly. Take your wings and fly. Amen. Sit down. Let's continue prophesying. Chapter 53, verse 4. Surely he has borne not one grief and carried our souls. God anticipated that the life you would live on earth would have griefs and sorrows. He sent his son to the cross to carry that. We esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Why? So that you don't, you know that's what we were talking about in communion. Don't try to follow Jesus' example here. <laughs> you are not the savior. There was an exchange during the last supper and then he started carrying all these things. So everything you see there, you just know the opposite is your portion. Yeah. Don't stay in grief and sorrow. Sometimes things don't go as we hope. And the wisdom of life is to get up. Every new day is a new opportunity to, to, to start afresh. Today is the last day of your former life. Honestly, tomorrow when you wake up, you'll be starting a brand new new day and you can decide to write a completely different story yeah there's one time I used to have a phone number which everyone knew those days it was on a certain network that I will not tell you and it was coming to a new year and I felt like one of the ways to refresh my life was to just get another phone number. Whoa. Now, I'm not saying do this. It's not good for business. <laughs> yeah, your former clients are calling your number. It's number there. Is but I'm just giving that as an illustration. Oh, yeah. So I got a new number, and I just felt like, ha, ha. Do you know, those people who are in your phone book, who have been there for a long time, you never call, they never call, there's nothing, but you just how somehow keep their number. Tomorrow, you start writing a new story. Tomorrow, today, today is the first day of the rest of your life. You can decide that today you write a new story for your marriage. You forgive. You let go. You decompress. You de-escalate. Give gifts. Buy flowers. Give kameza. Hug. Sing songs. Be silly. Marriage works for silly people. Yeah. Serious people? No. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You are too serious. If you're too serious, don't get married. You'll ruin it. It's for silly people who say bad jokes to each other and tickle each other and laugh at the joke when it's not funny. Oh yeah. Sit you. 
Anga tevu de yo na yoli na seka. Oh yes. Write a new story. Don't carry around the burdens of life. No. Just write a new story. The other guy carried the sorrows and griefs. He was smitten by God. And now there are people who. Nechino can chitezem. Huh? Elder roots. And chitezem. There are some people. <laughs> they think that God smites them. Ah. So this guy. Was it this guy or someone? You know, sometimes I'm listening to so many people, so I'm trying to figure out who said what. So anyway, this other one. One of those religious people came to them and said, you know, you know Paul's thorn in the flesh? I think now I'm carrying a thorn in the flesh. God has given me a thorn in the flesh. So the guy started telling him, brother, you really think that you, your revelation also, you are at the level of Paul, you've been to heaven and all of that, so you have to be given a thorn to keep you humble. He said, no, you're suffering from the result of your sins, not righteousness. Just repent and receive your healing. Those who claim that God gave you a thorn in the flesh, you are saying you have been to the third heaven. Because that was Paul's problem. He had been to paradise and he had seen things that are not allowed to be said. So they gave him a thorn in the flesh, which by the way was in sickness, it was persecution, to keep him humble. Because of the abundance of the revelation. You can't show up, you don't even know where Leviticus is and you're saying you have a thorn in the flesh. What revelation are you carrying that would force God to give you a thorn in the flesh? Olinawochi. You think Hezekiah is a book in the Bible. And you're claiming to have a thorn in the flesh. Hmm? You're quoting Elijah 12 of 2. I think someone in this section might be claiming to have a thorn in the flesh. Wow. They are not this side. Eh? Okay. So, gallery, gallery, I'm told. Okay, they refuse. They, they are saying they are not the ones. Sit down. So, do not fall for the lie that God is trying to punish you through sickness. No. You see, the Bible says Jesus is an express image of the Father. Now, how many times does Jesus put sickness on anyone in his ministry between Matthew and John? Rather, what was he doing the whole time? He was removing sickness. So you can't accuse the remover of sickness of being the putter of sickness. It's not possible. Oh, by the way, in this church, can I tell you something about this church? Yes. Sit down. But I'm going to tell you something. And if you know, you know. It, this is for only those who know. Since I'm talking about God being accused of putting sickness when he's on what? Removes sickness. I want you to know that in this church, we believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. And it's for a lifetime. And that anything outside of that is sinful and inconsistent with scripture and the will of God. You can clip, pick out this clip and post it on all your social media. If you think it is too fast, I can slow it down. In this church, we believe that marriage 
is between one man and one woman for life and that anything outside of that arrangement is inconsistent with scripture and therefore sinful yeah that said it's not our position to judge and condemn people because of their situations and circumstances that we don't know but that's what we believe and I think it's good to have something you believe yeah so that, that's, that's what we believe and practice so it's one thing to say I believe something but you don't practice it no that's what we believe and practice yeah and And so, it is what it is. You can now sit down. Yeah. <laughs> if you know, you know. Because they said they have to say it. I've said it. So they'll cut it out for you. And there are those who are asking you. What does your pastor believe? Then you can just forward many times. <laughs> you know those things that can't say forwarded many times. Media team, eh? Uh, many times. One man, one woman. For life. There may be accidents along the way. But you know when an accident happens, you come, pick the victims, take them to hospital. They recover and then they continue with life. They don't die at the accident place. You don't reach the accident and start killing the people who have been involved in the accident. And saying, why, 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 why? Why did your whatever leave you? No, I don't know why they left me. Okay. I need help, not murder. <laughs> Where were we? Verse 4. 4, 4, 4. Smitten by God. Now, Jesus was smitten by his father. So that you. Do you know, because he bore our sin, that communion thing we did, now he was carrying sin, therefore he was smiteable. Because God hates sin. So then now you, you show up, sing, oh, and the righteous. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Pastor Talent has refused to give me moonwalking coaching. I'm going to hire another coach. Sir Bobby, eh? Stop. Guys, we have to go. Okay. So, if there is affliction, pain, all of that is not from God. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that they may have life and have it more. Is it James or Peter who writes and says, every good and perfect gift. James. James. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of lights. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation. NLT, Kubanga, shadow of turning. It's turning some people. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father who created all. We have a buzz. Somebody.
Someone touched something. Why? <laughs> Who created all the lights? In the... He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He doesn't change. It's not like today God is in a good mood, tomorrow is in a bad mood, today is healing, tomorrow is making people sick. No. God is more consistent than you. Even you, you would deny being that kind of person. So, the whole idea of when I'm gay, I have a thorn in the flesh, it is called malaria. No. Even Paul's thorn in the flesh was persecution. It wasn't sickness. Did you, do you ever see Paul writing that he was sick? Not once. You two can step in that and say, sickness and me. Yeah. And you don't have to be sick to go to heaven, to die. No, you can sleep like Jacob. You just realize, I think my time is up. You call everyone, you bless them. Then you sing a song. Who's, whose grandma were we talking about? Yeah, Pastor B7's grand, grandmother. Huh? grandmother. Called all their children, grandchildren. Some of you don't read the, the, the devotionals. So that's why you're looking at me like that. All these stories are in the devotional. You, why are you looking on gas? Why are you looking like you are from another fellowship? What a shock. So they, they prayed, prayed or sang, prayed. And by the time they said, um, Amen, she, she was gone. She had gone to heaven. That's called organized death of the righteous. See, no, no. Are you listening? That's how you shall exit. People, by the time they finish the grace, your amen is from another world. Wow. Okay. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for peace was upon him and by his stripes we are. Look at all those vast words. They mean something. He was wounded for our transgressions. Not his. Now that's so long ago. They knew in 2024 you'd be going around trying, trying out transgressions. And they wounded him 2,000 years ago for your current transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. Wow. Chastisement for our peace was upon him. Our peace. We receive peace by his stripes we are healed. Next. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us. It's like Manange. We are the ones who are going astray. We are the ones turning each their own way. But the punishment is being put on someone else. That's the essence of Good Friday. That's the essence of Christianity. The punishment for your whatever was put on someone else. Now we are not, what does he say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who died to sin continue in it? But it is important for you and I to recognize that we can't save ourselves and that God anticipated our failures and he put on Christ ah. 
look, look at that. He has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's try like the amplified version. Or amplified classic if they have any additional words. Amp, amp, minus the sea. All of us like sheep have gone astray. We have turned each one to his own way, but the Lord has caused the wickedness of us all, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, to fall on him instead of us. Our bad attitude, our lying, Telling the person, I'm on my way. You are not on your way. They ask, where are you? I'm on my way. What kind of place is that called my way? That's why you can't say, I'm in Nakulabye. You just say, I'm on my way. Then they get, where, where on your way are you? Around the bypass. The bypass starts from Busega to where you're getting it. We are on the bypass. Which roundabout? Wow. I mean jam. Which jam? There's jam everywhere. Which jam are you in? <laughs> the jam of the what? Bread. I am a few minutes away. Wow. That one was also laid on him. You know, if we knew how much Jesus loves us. Let's finish. Verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Injustice. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shares is silent. So he opened not his mouth. For him, he received injustice so you could get justice. He took all the mistreatment so that he shall give his angels charge over you to seek justice for you. Next. We are just reading through. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who would declare his generation for he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people he was stricken. Wow. Next verse. And they made his grave with the wicked. But with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any <clears throat> deceit in his mouth. What a savior. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin you shall see his seed he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied by his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquities let's stand up Amen. Do you know that forgiveness and healing go together? That's why Peter says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, 
that we having died to sin might live for righteousness, that by whose stripes you were healed. James says, if is anyone among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he'll be forgiven. It's always the same thing. Psalm 103, bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your... That's why Jesus went about teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, which leads to what? Forgiveness of sins and healing. They are like this. So once you understand that you are forgiven, you also understand that you were healed. If you, if you think your forgiveness comes in, uh, in phases, you'll also think your healing comes in phases. But if your forgiveness came in one package and is permanent and eternal, you know your healing came in one package and is permanent and eternal. Praise God. Can we just pray in the spirit and thank God for his kindness, for forgiving us, laying on him our iniquity, taking the handwriting of requirements that was against us, taking them out of the way, that we may have a relationship with the Father. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Your good. Oh, yes. And as we start to close this service, if you've not given your life to Jesus, you've not received this overwhelming, amazing love, I want to pray with you. That's the biggest miracle of your life. To receive eternal life. Amen. So as everyone is praying. And as, I want you to put up your hand wherever you are saying. Pastor pray for me. I want to receive Jesus. I've never made a commitment to receive Jesus. I see that hand. God bless you. Just put your hand wherever you are. You're saying I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. You can come here where I am. I want to shake your hand. You want to receive Jesus. If you're upstairs, downstairs, just come. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Just stay here with me. Anyone else? Anybody else? You're saying? Just walk majestically. I see you can No, it's okay. You can stand. Just come. Just come. This is... Oh, God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Anyone else? You're saying... Pray for me. I need to receive this. Oh, God bless you. Welcome. Keep coming. Keep coming. Time to receive Jesus. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my sister. Your life will never be the same. He has taken our sins upon him. He has taken our iniquity. I see more people are coming. Let's continue to receive them. We'll wait for you. Just come. Just come. The free gift of life. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Keep coming, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. You're saying yes to Jesus. Whether you're young, God bless you. Or old, the free gift is available for everyone. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? You can ask your neighbor. You can say, that's too far. This place is too big. I don't want to walk. They may stop the song when I'm in the middle. They can come with you. Ask your neighbor and ask if you can walk with them. In this church, during the altar call, we all support Liverpool. Only during the altar call. Because they say that you will never walk alone. Keep coming, young people. Come and receive Jesus. 
Oh, yes. God bless you. God bless you. Your salvation will stick. Yeah, some people think you're too young to get saved. No. You don't have to first destroy yourself before you come to Christ. You can start early. Early start. Anyone else from anywhere? Come. This is it's just life. We receive free gift of salvation. We don't have to worry about when people start forwarding those videos. Where will you go if Jesus comes back? No. We already know where we are going. Last boarding call. Flight Jesus. Flight Jesus. He has put on him the iniquity of us all. Let's celebrate our sisters. God bless you. God bless you. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. Hey, what a blessing. Are there more people coming? Yeah. Just start walking. Let nobody stop you. This is your father's house. You can come to him and receive the free gift of salvation. God bless you, my sister. Keep coming, keep walking, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. What a good Friday. Amen. Can we celebrate our brothers and sisters who are... Just put your hand in your chest and pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. thank you for today. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Forgive my past. Forgive my past. And give me a great future with you. Give me a great future. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. That I may walk with you. That I may walk with you. That I may serve you. That I may serve you. Heal me of any wounds in my Heal past. Me of any that I will walk a healthy journey with you. Make me a proclaimer of the gospel. Make me a proclaimer of the gospel. Help me to help many get to know you. Help me to help many get and to receive you. And to receive you. I thank you today. Because I believe I'm forgiven. Because I believe I'm forgiven. And I'm born again. I'm born again. And I belong to you. Belong to you. Amen. <laughs> Let's celebrate. I need to go with this brother here. You're going right here, just where that light is. We want to take your names. We want to pray for you by name, to contact you, and to help you on this new journey. Is that okay? Can I have some pastors go with them as well? Because they may be looking at Trevor and saying, can we trust this guy? No, you go with the pastors. God bless you. Can we celebrate them? Wow! Now we are closing. We already prayed for healing, but there may be people who feel like they need uh, someone to touch them. Hmm? You know what I'm saying? Like, I need that touch. So I'm going to ask some of these pastors to come in front here, our network leaders, our cluster leaders. Just come and line up here. And if you need that touch, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of close so that those who need to go, you can go. But if you need someone to pray for you specifically, don't just come and say, me, I just need someone to touch me. No, 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 no. What a shock. If you need prayer for healing, because we say tonight there's what? If you need prayer for healing, you come. These people are going to pray for you. Why, why are some cluster leaders sticking back in the congregation? 
they are organizing to come to be prayed for. You know, I might call out your names and you'll be shocked. But for now, let me... Thank you, Father, for your healing power that is present with us tonight. Thank you for your servants, even as they lay hands on the sick. I pray that these hands will heal the sick. That's what you said in your word. May there be no sickness or condition that remains tonight, tonight, tonight. Thank you, Lord. Bless them. Even as the people come to receive a touch from you. Thank you, Lord. I feel a strong presence of God here. So even as you come, I want you to have a great expectation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So the worship team will be ministering in some music as you come. Amen. And if you need to go home, it's perfectly okay. But I would encourage you, just come. Receive a touch. Amen. So for those, as when you finish as you go, may God bless you. May he cause his face to shine on you and give you peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. That is your destiny in Jesus' name.